Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast number 316, a continuation of a discussion, the benefits of testosterone. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. So we started out talking about the benefits of testosterone that are the most frequent complaints, the most frequent reasons people come to see me for testosterone pellets. And we're talking about replacement of testosterone that your body has lost, that it stopped making. This is for both men and women. As we age, both men and women, we naturally produce testosterone. And as we age, our ability to produce testosterone declines, and the amount of testosterone that we have declines. And what uh, anti-aging medicine specialists now believe is that testosterone loss is the original domino in the aging cascade. And so when you begin to lose your testosterone, that domino falls over, and then it knocks over other dominoes, like loss of sex drive, loss of muscle mass, loss of energy, inability to sleep. There's so many things. Uh, mm -hmm. opportunistic infections and diseases. Your immune system that, drops. I mean, that decreases. hits you. And that's all part of what, you know, aging uh, impacts our quality of life, our ability to live independent, and ultimately it kills us. So <laughs> what they have discovered is that if you replace the testosterone that you have lost in appropriate amounts, you can recover from many of those conditions or you can avoid them completely or you can delay significantly the onset of, of the, some of those issues. So it's, it's multiple layers of benefits. It actually makes us live longer mm -hmm. because we aren't going to be getting many of the diseases of aging that we'll talk about. But even if we didn't live longer, our healthy life will be longer. Our life, right. our the health, life you do have. health span right. will be almost as long as our lifespan and we'll have a short period of, right. of being ill instead of having a short health span where we're fully able to be productive parts of society and a long sick uh, span right. right before we die or before we die. So, so we're trying to shorten that sick part mm -hmm. that, that helps us individually and helps society. We don't have to have people taking care of us. We are, we can live independently. That's my goal for myself and my patients right. is that they can live at home. I mean, most of my patients are quite young and they don't need to think about that right now, but, but you have to someday. start. It's just like a bank account for retirement. You have to start now to re keep your body healthy so that you can then not end up living in your daughter's basement or something like that. Right. Because you or or somewhere in your daughter's house where she can take care of you. So, I mean, it's it's not good to be a burden to your children. I don't want to be, and I don't intend on well, being. Well, and that. sometimes you you can you can achieve a benefit that you don't even realize you've achieved. Like my wife, for instance, is a, a patient of Dr. Maupin. She gets testosterone replacement. Before she started seeing Dr. Maupin, her gynecologist, uh, her OBGYN, had her on medicines to prevent osteoporosis, and those medicines have some serious side effects. But he was worried about her bone density okay. diminishing as she aged. And the issues there uh, become brittleness, uh, frequent regular breaking of bones, uh, inability to stand up straight and walk. You know, I mean, there, there are a lot of Her cervical vertebrae uh, collapsed a little bit, and right. that was part of the osteoporosis as well. Right. And so when she started seeing Dr. Moffin and got testosterone pellets, after the first year, she went back to her regular physician for her annual checkup. And he said, well, it's been three years since we've done your bone density test. Let's do that now and see how much you've deteriorated. And he was incredibly surprised to find out that not only has she not deteriorated, but that her bone density was back in the normal range. Mm -hmm. So her strength had improved and her risk factors for bone issues and mm -hmm. brittleness and breakage later have gone away. But she never had a broken bone. She never had. I mean, yeah, so she it was just a risk. It was a risk of those things. 
right. and the progression. Usually people lose 1% per year, right. and as the bone gets smaller, that percent is more important. Okay, so if you have thinner bones, you lose a percent of that, you're getting really critically thin. Right. So we start worrying about people with osteopenia and osteoporosis early on so that we can get a jump start on it. But the drugs that we give people usually don't build bone. They just keep you from losing bone, okay? Bone is a dynamic thing. It, it, it grows and is absorbed. It grows and is absorbed as we lose our testosterone and estrogen for women. We then absorb more than we make. Mm-hmm. So we, can, we can't fix the absorbing, but we fix the, the making. But with testosterone, we fix both. Yeah. So this was, this was a, um, an obvious change to her doctor he you know she said she had better sex or she had this she had she could think better she that. could yeah. yeah he didn't really believe that he was along the classic lines of gynecologist from 40 and 50 years ago <laughs> he said you're just getting old you're losing it you don't have it anymore she wasn't even 50 well, that's what his answer was when she said, I don't have sex drive anymore. And he was like, well, you know, that happens to women and it's Too happened bad. to you. Oh, well. <laughs> but but it wasn't his sex drive or his wife. So he wasn't nearly as interested. In, if it had been his wife with no sex drive, I think he would have been more interested. One I mean, would hope. obviously. One, one would hope. Obviously, yeah. that would be. But still, I mean, sometimes it's hard for us to walk in the shoes of our patients, walk right. in the shoes of our patients' husbands when this happens and understand the gravity of what is happening when the sex drive is so gone. so insidiously incremental. You know, you mm-hmm. don't just wake up one day and boom, it's all over. It's a gradual drift into nothingness mm-hmm. that after you're far down that road, you look up and go, oh my gosh, when did that happen? Right. You know? It is insidious. And yes. it, is, it, it is something that we as patients don't think about and our doctors think less about because we, we got like, one hour of sex education in medical school and, and residency. And, you know, in OBGYN, you're supposed to know a lot about sex. Well, most of the people that I trained with, except for personal experience, didn't know anything. Right. You know, so it wasn't that we were taught anything. We have to learn this on the as we go. So testosterone being a an issue for sex drive and being the, the biggest issue, the biggest factor that gives us sex drive was not even known. Right. When we were being when trained, you were in school. right? So, and the and most of our our journals shy away from sex because I don't know why. So, so talking about that example with bone structure, we also want to talk about muscle mass and muscular strength because again, you you've all seen elderly people that can't stand upright, they can't walk, they don't they have get balance, up like, they drift. Uh, you you no, follow one of them down the grocery the store aisle, and they're all over the place because their balance is going mm-hmm. and their strength is low, and they they shuffle. They don't pick their feet mm-hmm. up because they're afraid of falling. That's all muscle muscle mass and muscle strength. And when you get to a certain point, that's really what impairs our ability to be independent is our loss of muscle. It's mm-hmm. not our bones mm-hmm. in general. Everyone who has had who has aged loses muscle. You never see anybody who hasn't taken testosterone and or growth hormone who has normal muscle mass at seventy. It just doesn't happen. Well, and we've just recently done a health cast on the importance of resistance training and exercises for the elderly. Uh, as you age and you lose muscle mass, you need to do some things proactively to, to develop what you have. And testosterone mm-hmm. replacement can help you build muscles, but then you have to work those muscles to make them do what you need them to do. And the reverse is true. If you work out, the most frequent thing I hear from men is, I worked out all my life. I worked out every day for an hour. I work out with weights. I alternate with with uh, running. And now I work out and I don't build muscle. I'm losing muscle. Right. My stamina is gone. I can't run as far. I am exhausted. And that's yeah. the biggest thing they say. I am exhausted when I get done working out. Instead of, I'm energized, which is what working out usually does for you historically and and it's not just cardio cardio is insufficient you need cardio yes. and you need resistance you but need balance even if too. you have both of those right my dad had both did both of those his whole life right and um even if they were little weights and his so muscle mass weight. dropped significantly after 80 okay. he lived to be 96 93 so even if you do those things 
you lose muscle mass as you age and you have to have testosterone to maintain it. So testosterone helps increase muscle mass, it helps increase exercise stamina, it helps increase your overall sense of well-being. There's a cluster of benefits there that come and, and again, the, the, the difficulty in describing this is describing it as a sense of gradual improvement. You know, it's just like, uh, how do you prove a negative or disprove a negative? Mm -hmm. You know, have you stopped beating your wife yet? Oh, no, I don't know how to answer that question. Do you have a good, do, do you enjoy life again? Well, one and of the ways that you accommodate for that in your practice mm -hmm. is when people come in, you take a photograph of them and you write down and document what their presenting complaints are. Mm -hmm. And then you take, uh, as time goes by and they keep coming back in, you update those things. Mm -hmm. And you have a pictorial progression that you can show them. This is how you were sitting. This is how you were standing. This is what you look like. Uh, we, one of the benefits we'll talk about in a minute is weight management. Uh, but, you know, you articulated that these were the concerns that you had. Now you no longer have them. They forget they had them. Yes. Well, yeah, you I mean, know, it's not some, hurting today, so you know, the roof's not leaking. It must be okay. Right. And the, Yeah. And the, oftentimes, and along with this goes joint, joint pain. Right. Joint pain goes away, and that's the most frequent symptom that people forget they had. You say, how's your joint pain now? Joint muscle pain. Yeah. And they go, what joint pain? Right. Seriously, I mean, I'm like, no, oh, you checked it here at your writing. Right. I mean, <laughs> you I didn't to. add that because yeah. they go, wait, l let me see that. Yeah. And then they think, you know, yeah, I used to ache when I got out of bed. My hands hurt in the morning and all day. And if I wrote too much, I got cramps. They don't have that anymore because testosterone gives you back the lubrication of your joints, even little joints, joints in your feet. Joints, every joint has a synovial um, synovial fluid in a little sack inside the joint mm -hmm. that gives you lubrication so that you don't have cartilage to cartilage rubbing. That's when you start having to have joint replacements. Well, no we, fluid. We've all seen that cartoon cartilage. of the ages That's of it. man. You know, and you have mm -hmm. uh, going from a baby back up and then back mm -hmm. down. Uh, maybe you've had experience yourself or have seen someone who has trouble getting out of bed in the middle of the night to go to, go to the bathroom. I mean, they have trouble standing up straight. They have trouble mm -hmm. getting their balance. They have, I mean, it, it's a gradual sort of unfolding process. Mm -hmm. And with testosterone replacement, very often, that's no longer required. You, you have to get up to go to the bathroom. You just get up to go to the bathroom like you did when mm -hmm. you were young. And they don't necessarily notice that until somebody calls it to their attention. Mm -hmm. Their spouse or somebody who sees them get out of a chair. Yeah. I mean, I have, Stood a, right up. I had a, have a good friend that I tried to get to come to see me for years because he got one joint was ruined and then he'd have to have it replaced. Another joint was ruined. He had to, and then by the, he's my age and he'd, he, we'd be having Thanksgiving dinner and he'd get up like this out of a chair. I mean, yeah. slowly, painfully getting out of a chair. I finally said, you got to come see me. This is going to fix this. Yeah, and fix all those other things like your high blood pressure and these other things that you're having, this is going to get better if you'll just come see me. And finally, he was so miserable. He, he sucked it up and came to see me. Yeah. Now he's my best billboard. He looks awesome. He's gained muscle mass. He gets out of a chair like he yeah. did bef a and long he's, time he's ago. he's reporting that he's not in pain. He's, oh, that's right. And pain of any kind decreases when you're on testosterone, chronic pain, mm -hmm. because it increases your, your threshold for pain. In other words, you've got to have a lot more pain to feel it. So that's another thing that we didn't hadn't even um, written in our list of fifteen things yeah. because this that is something that's not everybody. What would you have more more relief from joint and muscle muscle pain, pain and yeah. chronic and pro chronic pain so we'll like back pain? Into that one. Yeah. So uh, yes, go so ahead. Better weight control. We just yes. briefly mentioned that. Do you want to speak to that more? Yeah. We what happens is it's not really about weight or gravity. <laughs> it's about your size. So testosterone improves muscle mass and burns fat, and at first, you may not lose weight, but your belly goes in. You get more compact. You yeah, everything starts going in. You get more muscle, you get stronger, and muscle, when, when you have lost testosterone for a period of time, your muscle becomes striated with fat, like, like a good ribeye, so basically. Yeah. yeah, so there's fat inside the muscle, too. Tastes just like chicken. Yeah, well, yeah, ooh. So, um... <laughs> So as your your muscle is is infiltrated with the fat, you have to then reverse that. With the testosterone, first, you don't lose the fat that's on top of your muscle. 
first. You lose the fat that's in the muscle, and the muscle that fat is replaced by muscle mass. Mm -hmm. So your muscle gets stronger, thicker, heavier, but your size gets smaller. So usually I see that people start losing actual weight about six to nine months on, on the outside. I mean, sometimes people lose weight right away, but that's not everybody. Right. But at six to nine months, they make enough muscle mass to burn calories. That's your engine. That's what you're burning calories with is muscle. Right. Without muscle, you don't burn calories. So unless you run a lot and that's still, you don't burn as many calories. So it's important to gain muscle to burn calories. And what they do is all of a sudden they say, hey, I just dropped 10 pounds and now it's so easy. Right. It's so easy. And I'm warm in the morning, which means as they're sleeping, they're burning calories. That's where you want to get. And that's where you can't get no matter how much you lift or run without testosterone after the age of 50. You have to have testosterone for that. So the next two benefits that I want to talk about mm -hmm. as a cluster, you have improved mm -hmm. heart and circulatory performance and increased resistance to diabetes type 2. Right. Diabetes type 2 is an epidemic in the United States, and we've done some health casts on why that is so. It has to do with diet and, and corn sugars and carbs and all those things. And, and gaining weight. And, and gaining weight. Uh, they... Doctors aggressively start to challenge you about watching your weight and changing your diet and exercise programs as a way to avoid the onset of type 2 diabetes. Now, some people mm -hmm. genetically are predisposed and are, are at greater risk, but a lot of us do this to ourselves because of the, the habituation we have around food. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and inactivity, lack of exercise. yeah, so sitting those, those in front of balances. your computer. So just giving you testosterone by itself is not going to stop that. It's not going to solve that. But it is going to give you the tool or the capacity that you need to maintain your weight and to do the exercise that you need to do to help you avoid type 2 diabetes. It, it actually, testosterone actually decreases insulin resistance, which does actually improve your uh, your blood sugar, so it does help somewhat, and it helps you lose fat, fat mm -hmm. and weight. So, in a way, you're not going to be able to reverse type two diabetes without testosterone, and sometimes without metformin, which okay. is a medication that helps you reverse type two diabetes to a point. But you need those two things added They're to your... They're preventive on the front end. Yeah, they're preventive. So yeah. you don't end up getting type 2 diabetes until, unless you're so far gone right. that you must take medicine. And that, and that sometimes happens. But medicine greater than and more, more uh, effective than metformin. But if you're just at the very beginning, we give you testosterone and metformin and start you on an exercise program because now you have the energy then you will start losing weight and you can pull back from the edge of diabetes back to normal life. Right. You don't have to live with type 2 diabetes. That's the best part about it. Type 1, you can't get over. Type 2, you can lose weight and become more insulin sensitive. And, and more careful with your diet. Yes. And so you can actually come off of the diabetic medicine if you can do mm -hmm. the behavioral things. Right, but so it takes the medicine at the forth. beginning yeah, it does. to get you there. And it, it always takes testosterone. You stop taking testosterone, you go backwards into insulin resistance. Two other conversations that always come up around replacing testosterone are prostate cancer, cancers in general, mm -hmm. breast cancer, mm -hmm. uh, and heart attacks. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of new research data that is out there around the world that speaks to both heart attacks and cancers with regard to replacing testosterone. And it's all good. Uh, heart attacks are less, you are less likely to make plaque in your blood vessels because you'll have lower inflammation profile in your blood. It takes inflammation plus fat to make a plaque. So testosterone lowers inflammation. It also lowers LDL cholesterol. So, and it strengthens the muscle of the heart. So those three things together make you less likely to have a heart attack if you've been on testosterone pellets. I can't speak to the other types. Um, and it will, all, it will also keep you from getting diabetes, which also decreases your risk of, diabetes, of heart attack. Right. But you'll, if you look at somebody who's been on testosterone and who had high cholesterol, you see the cholesterol come down, you do their scores, their calcium scores of their heart, and... 
they're zero after several years of testosterone. Wow. So they clean up your blood vessels and clean them out, which is very important for both ED and heart disease because right. remember, ED is a first sign of possible heart disease and right. plaque development. Right. So when we give testosterone, we're preventing heart disease in both men and women. We are not causing anything that would cause That's any any factor that. that would possibly increase your risk of heart disease. It prevents it. Then when we um, we go to uh, so that's diabetes, that's heart disease, and then we go to autoimmune disorders. Mm -hmm. Testosterone replacement treats autoimmune disorders, and it's and many articles are now coming out in the rheumatology journals. I was going to say, can you give a couple of examples of autoimmune disorders? Autoimmune disorders are rheumatoid arthritis or lupus or MS. Uh, those are they're all autoimmune diseases. They have other. They also call them um, collagen. Collagen vascular diseases, that's an old name. Okay. But, uh, but these diseases are, your, are basically your own immune system, your T cells, uh, which are the cells that kill bacteria and cancer cells and viruses, the T cells turn on you. Mm -hmm. And they attack certain pieces or certain parts of your anatomy, like your nerves or your, or your muscles or... So, so you are actually turning your own immune system on itself, and that can happen if you've lost testosterone. If you've lost testosterone. Right. So we know that that makes somebody's risk higher to get an autoimmune disease if they have, if they have low testosterone. And when we treat them with pellets, then the autoimmune disease usually stops progressing. So we have MS patients who had progressive MS, they stop progressing when they get testosterone. We have patients who've got, had blindness from a, a specific kind of lupus. It stopped the progression of their blindness where because they started testosterone when they did, one eye had already been, was already gone, but the other eye didn't go, didn't, didn't progress. So they can still, they can still see out of that eye. So this is the miracle of this type of treatment. MS causes pain, causes loss of, of energy, or excuse me, loss of uh, strength. Your uh, nerves and muscles are all involved. There's like a burning pain. I, I just treated a friend who has that, and she's like, I'm much better. I, I'm not on my meds anymore for the MS, mm -hmm. but I am much better. All of my parameters are better, and I feel better. My muscles don't hurt. I don't hurt. I'm that's, more that's active. Truly miraculous. And she doesn't have days where she has to stay at home in bed anymore. Yeah. But she didn't have progressive MS. She just had MS, which is is good. <laughs> yeah, it's it, two kinds, of more intense and severe. One other thing to close out that I want you to talk mm -hmm. about, because I've heard you talk to me about uh, people with migraines mm -hmm. that go to neurologists because mm -hmm. nothing works mm -hmm. to alleviate their migraines. And the neurologist have learned, at least the ones in our area, mm -hmm. to refer them to you for treatment because you can do some things that they've not been able to do. So, right. so speak We to refer that. back and forth, but migraines can, migraines have a trigger, and the tri there are many different kinds of triggers. And one of the triggers is low hormone levels or a drop from high to low. So those two triggers that have to do with hormones, if a patient has that, no amount of migraine medicine or beta blockers, or the other things they use to prevent migraines, is going to really prevent them 100%. Okay. So the neurologists you use all their efforts, their medications, and that, and sometimes some of them have these really cool um, combinations of, of vitamins that really help, but don't get the hormone ones. Mm -hmm. So they do their thing, and then when they have somebody who has hormonal, both men and women, who um, they believe have lost testosterone because of their other symptoms, they send them to me, and I replace them with testosterone. Sometimes women need a little estrogen too, but not much. Mm -hmm. uh, but the testosterone itself keeps them from having migraines anymore, or that type of migraine. And my migraines are have been gone for 15 years. Ever since I started pellets, they have been absent. I don't yeah. even work. I don't even think about it. No, it's yeah, not part of my away. fifteen years. Is it's not part of my world. Thank yes. God, because it was incapacitating and it got worse with age. Yes. And once I got my testosterone back, 
gone. And that was kind of how I first started seeking information on it, was I didn't expect that, and I wasn't trained that this would help migraines at that time. So, 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 so it, it helped because I had them. Yes, and you know, and so you mm -hmm. can speak with compassion and passion about mm -hmm. them. Um, we've been talking in the last two health casts, 315 and 316, about the benefits of testosterone replacement. Want to say that it is not an instantaneous, miraculous cure for everything. It takes, uh, it, it helps your body position itself to live healthy and with functionality for longer periods of time, hopefully to make your health span almost as long as your lifespan. But that requires some lifestyle awareness and changes on your part about diet, about exercise, about doing some things in appropriate ways that you may not have been doing but your body will be positioned then to take advantage of those things that you can do where without it, then you're just going to deteriorate and you're going to age in pretty miserable and, and dysfunctional ways. So please check out both of the podcasts and consider looking at the issue as you age of getting your testosterone replaced and any other hormones that you may need to have replaced checked. Thank you for listening to us. We hope this changes how you manage your life. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.